Hey everyone, it's Kristen from Quebeca, and in this video, I'll show you how to design sticker sheets from a Dingbat font in Silhouette Studio. With some small modifications, you can use this method for any font or clip art graphic though. So if you don't work with Dingbat fonts, I hope this video will still be helpful for you. I've got the Silhouette Studio software open, and I have the 4.1 Designer Edition, but you should be able to do everything that I'll be doing even if you have the free version of the software. I have the Page Setup panel open here on the right, and to open that, just click the top icon from the far right menu, the one that looks like a little piece of paper. My paper is already set to letter size, and you can choose that from the Size drop-down menu if your paper isn't already set to this size. The reason for doing this is that most of us don't have printers that will print wider than a standard letter size, and we want to make sure that we're setting up our sticker sheets on the same size paper that we'll be printing on. The next thing that we want to do is to turn on registration marks. With the Page Setup panel still open, click on the far right icon to open the Registration Marks panel. Then from the Style dropdown, choose the type of registration marks that correspond with the machine that you have. I'll be using a Cameo, so I'll choose Type 1. Okay, now that our page is set up, we're ready to start designing our sticker sheets. I'll go over to the far left menu and choose the Draw a Rectangle tool. Then I'll click and drag on the artboard to make a rectangle. It doesn't matter what size it is at this point because we'll resize it to the correct size next. I'll go back over to the far left menu and choose the Select tool, and then I'll click to select the rectangle that I just drew. After that, I'll go over to the far right menu and click to open the Transform panel, which is where the Resize panel is located. We'll open the Resize panel by clicking the diagonal double-sided arrow icon that's second from the left. In the Specify Dimensions area in the Resize panel, I want to make sure that the Lock Aspect Ratio lock is unlocked because I want to resize the width and height of my rectangle separately. Then I'll change the width to 6.75 inches and the height to 3.75 inches and hit the Apply button to resize the rectangle. This will give us a nice size sticker sheet and will allow us to fit two sticker sheets on the page. In this orientation, the sticker sheet is sideways, and while I'm working, I want it to be right side up so I can more easily add the sticker designs to it. So I'll go up to the top menu and select Object, then Rotate, then Rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. Clockwise works too. I'll click and drag it to the side here so it doesn't interfere with the sticker images as we're working. Okay, now our sticker sheet is right side up and ready for our sticker designs. Now we want to go over to the far right menu and click to open the text style panel. I'll be using the I Heart Cupcakes Dingbat font for this project, so I'll start typing I Heart Cupcakes into the text style input area. And the I Heart Cupcakes font has five different styles, and for the sticker images we'll be using the silhouette style. So I'll click on that style in the font list area to select it, then head over to the far left menu and click the text icon. I'll click on the artboard and start typing. This font includes 26 different cupcake designs, and they're mapped to all of the lowercase letters, so this first cupcake is the lowercase a. I want to use this for my first sticker, but it's a little too small, so I'll click and drag to highlight it, and then I'll go over to the text style panel and change the font size to 150 points. When I drag the resized cupcake over to the sticker sheet, it looks like it's going to be a little too large, so I'll double click to activate it, then click and drag to highlight it again, and then I'll go over to the text style panel and size it down to 125 points. This will be a much better fit for our sticker sheet. Now we're ready to color the image, so I'll drag it off of the sticker sheet for now, and I'll zoom in so you can see better as we're working. The cupcake as it is currently is still a font character, and all of the individual parts of the image are considered one piece, so we're unable to fill it with multiple color fills right now. But all we need to do to change this is to go over to the far right menu and open the Modify panel and click Release in the Compound Paths area to release the paths. When I do this, you'll see the bounding box around the cupcake gets smaller. This is because when the paths are released, any spacing and margins that are associated with the character in the Dingbat font go away and we're now left with just an image. While the image is still selected, I'll go up to the top menu and select Object, then Ungroup. And when I do this, you can see that little boxes pop up all around all of the different parts of the image. Now we'll be able to easily fill all of those different parts with different colors. You can use the Fill Color panel from the far right menu to recolor your image, 
It allows you to choose preset colors or your own custom colors, but for this project I actually set up a separate file with a color palette that I want to use for the stickers. It's just a bunch of circles that I filled with different colors that I might want to use for the stickers. I'll click to select them, then press Ctrl or Command plus C to copy, and then I'll click back over to the sticker sheet file and press Ctrl or Command plus V to paste. The circles are pretty large, so I'll just click and drag in one of the bounty box corners to resize. First, I'll click the cherry piece on the cupcake, and then I'll head over to the far left menu and choose the color dropper tool. Then I'll go over to the colored circles and click on the hot pink circle to make the cherry that color. I'll repeat this process for the rest of the image, and the reason that I like setting up the little circle color palette beforehand is that it makes the coloring process go so much quicker when you use the palette with the color dropper tool. To select and color multiple elements at a time, click to select the first element, then press shift and continue to click on all of the additional elements that you want to color like I'm doing here with the cupcake frosting. Then you can recolor all of them at the same time using the dropper tool. Now that the entire cupcake is colored, I'll click and drag to select all of the elements, then press Ctrl or Command plus G to group them. Since I used the dropper tool and the colored circles have no border color, none of the elements in the cupcake has a border color, which is actually what we want here. If the image that you're working with does have a border color, then you'll want to open the line style panel from the far right menu and either set the line style to none or set it to a color that's different from the border color of any of the areas of the sticker sheet that we'll be cutting later. I'll explain this in more detail in a little bit. The next thing that we want to do is make a sticker border around the image that we just colored. And I'll zoom in a little more here so we can see better. If you're using graphics, clip art, or a regular font, then you can use the offset panel to make the border shape. But the iHeart Cupcakes font comes with a special sticker style, so the border cut files are already pre-made. I'll go over to the far right menu and click to open the text style panel. Then I'll choose the iHeart Cupcakes sticker style from the font list. For Dingbat fonts, Silhouette Studio actually shows the Dingbats in the font name preview, so you can only see the capital letters in the font since they're not mapped to a cupcake image. The sticker style should be the last of the five styles in the list if you have all of the styles installed on your computer. I'll just type it into the font name input area and click to highlight it. Next, I'll go over to the far left menu and click the text tool. Remember that the cupcake image is the lowercase letter A, so the corresponding sticker image will also be the lowercase A. I'll just type that in, and then I'll click and drag to highlight the image, and I'll go over and change the point size to 125 points, which is the same point size that we used for the cupcake image that we colored. Now you can see that the sticker shape fits perfectly around the colored cupcake image. Since the sticker border still has all of the font spacing and margins, when we go to line it up with the colored cupcake, it won't align properly. So we just need to open the modify panel and release the compound paths, just like we did earlier with the cupcake that we colored. Now I wanna go over to the far right menu and open the transform panel. And I'll click and drag on the artboard to select both the colored cupcake and the sticker border. Then I'll click to align both shapes horizontally, then vertically. Finally, I'll press Ctrl or Command plus G to group the shapes, and our first sticker is ready to go. I'll zoom out a bit here so we can see the sticker sheet rectangle, and we'll drag the sticker over to the sheet. I'll press Ctrl or Command plus C to copy the sticker, and then I'll press Ctrl or Command plus V to paste it, then I'll drag it beside the first sticker. I'll repeat this process until we've filled this row with stickers. In this instance, we can fit four stickers across. Now we want to line all of those stickers up perfectly, so I'll click and drag to select all four, and then I'll go over to the far right menu and click to open the transform panel. I'll click to center align the stickers vertically, and then I'll go down to the spacing area and click horizontal. This spaces each sticker so there's the exact same amount of space between each horizontally. Now that this row of stickers is set, I'll click Ctrl or Command plus G to group everything together. Before I go any further, I'm going to save this file to my computer so I don't lose any of my work. I'll continue to save regularly after this, and when I'm finished, I'll have the sticker sheet file saved and ready to go anytime I want to make more. Now we can move on and design our next sticker. I'll open up the text style window and choose the I Heart Cupcake Silhouette style, making sure it's sized to 125 points, and I'll type out the next cupcake that I want to color. I'll repeat the same process that we went through earlier to release the compound paths and color all of the elements of the cupcake. 
And then I'll switch over to the I Heart Cupcake sticker style to make the sticker border for the image. When the sticker was ready and I'm copying it to make a row over on the sticker sheet, I noticed that the point size was a little too large for this particular image, so I'll delete out the copies that I made and resize the original sticker down so four of the stickers will fit in the row. After the second row of stickers is aligned and grouped, I want to show you a great little shortcut that will save you some time. First I'll go over to the far right menu and choose the I Heart Cupcake Silhouette Style from the font list like we've done previously. But this time, instead of immediately going and releasing the compound pads, I'm going to press Ctrl or Command plus C to copy the cupcake, then Ctrl or Command plus V to paste it. I'll double click into the copy to highlight it, then go over to the text style panel and choose the I Heart Cupcakes sticker style from the list. This will change the cupcake silhouette to its corresponding sticker border, and it's perfectly sized to fit already. Now we can click and drag to select both the silhouette and the sticker border and go over to the far right menu and click to open the modify panel and release the compound paths for both shapes. If you want to speed things up even more, you can type out all of the silhouette cupcake images that you want to use for the entire sticker sheet at once, then copy and paste them, double click to highlight the copies, and click on the I Heart Cupcake sticker font to change the copies to sticker borders. Then you can release the compound paths all at once, ungroup, and color the cupcakes at one time. I'll continue making the cupcake stickers using the same process as we've gone through earlier, and I was able to fit five different sticker designs on this sheet. Now we want to align the stickers within the sheet, so we'll click and drag to select all of the grouped rows of stickers. I've opened the transform panel from the far right menu, and with all of the rows selected, I'll click to center align them horizontally. Then I'll head down to the spacing area in the transform panel and click to space the rows vertically. This will create the exact same amount of space between each row vertically. After this, I'll press Ctrl or Command plus G to group all of the rows together and I'll click and drag to select both the stickers and the rectangular sticker sheet border and I'll go back over to the transform panel and click to align the stickers horizontally then vertically within the sheet. So now everything is perfectly centered. We won't need our little circle color palette anymore for this project, so I'll click to select that and press backspace to delete it. We've got one more important thing to do before we finalize this sticker sheet and send it to print and cut. We'll be using Silhouette Studio's cut by color feature to cut the stickers separately from the sticker sheet border. Right now, both the sticker borders and the rectangular sticker sheet border are the same color, so we'll select the rectangle border and click to open the line style panel from the far right menu. Click the right icon in the panel, the one with the little colored lines, and then choose a different color for the sticker sheet border. I just chose a shade of blue. After this, click and drag to select the stickers in the rectangle sticker sheet border, then press Ctrl or Command plus G to create a single grouped element. Next, head up to the top menu and select Object, then Rotate, then Rotate Clockwise 90 degrees to rotate the sheet on its side. Drag it up inside the registration marks, then press Ctrl or Command plus C to copy it, then Ctrl or Command plus V to paste a copy of the sheet, and drag the copy down inside the registration marks. Now we're ready to print and cut, so we'll click the Send tab from the top right menu, and then we'll click the Line tab from the Send panel to open up the Cut by Color panel. Okay, you can see that we have three rows here. The red row, which represents our sticker border cut lines, the blue row, which represents our sticker sheet border cut line, and a row with no color, which represents all of the stickers themselves. This is why we made sure that our colored cupcakes had no border early in the design process. This way, they're already set not to cut, and the checkbox for this row is also unchecked, so the cutting machine won't do anything with it. We could have also chosen a different border color for them, something like purple or yellow, but it's not necessary since we only want to print them. We don't need to do anything with the image borders for these shapes. So first I'm going to set up the cut settings for the red row, which are the sticker border cut lines. They're already set to cut with the red tool, which is represented by the little red circle at the far left, so we'll leave that alone. I'll choose white sticker paper for the material type from the drop down in this row. I'm actually using the white glossy laser sticker paper from online labels for this, and with my auto blade at its current sharpness, the default settings for the Silhouette brand sticker paper also work. This will kiss cut the stickers, which means that the stickers will be cut cleanly, but the blade won't cut the whole way through the backer paper on the sticker sheet. 
Next, I want to add a pause after the sticker borders are cut. So I'll click the add pause button down toward the bottom of the panel. I actually thought that I could set up the different rows with different cut settings, and I could swear that I've done that before, but for some reason this time, every time I changed the cut settings for one row, it changed the cut settings for the other. I don't know if I just did something wrong or if this is a bug, but the way around it is to add a pause after the first row cuts, then change the cut settings for the second row and unpause. Okay, now I'm gonna send the file to my printer and I'll see you over at the Cameo when the printing is finished. All right, so I've got my printed sticker sheet loaded onto a cutting mat, and now I need to get my ratchet blade, adjust it, and place it into the right tool holder, the one with the little blue circle. My ratchet blade is really dull, so I ended up setting the blade depth to seven and doing two passes to cut the whole way through the sticker sheet backer paper. Your cut settings can vary widely depending on what type of sticker paper you're using and how sharp or dull your blade is. After I load the mat, I'll go over to Silhouette Studio and press send to start cutting the sticker borders. I always put the lid down on my machine before the registration mark detection process because leaving the lid open, especially under bright light, can mess up the registration detection. The Cameo had no problems with registration on this glossy sticker paper. It registered perfectly the first time around. When the sticker borders are cut, the machine will pause since we added the pause in Silhouette Studio earlier. Now I'm just going to head back over to Silhouette Studio on my computer and change the cut settings for the sticker sheet border so it cuts the whole way through. Then I'll unpause and the rest of the cutting will happen. Once that's done, the sticker sheets are finished and ready to go. I can just peel the sheets off of the cutting mat and you can see how beautifully the stickers themselves cut. These sticker sheets would make great additions to party favor bags and they'd be great if you're a teacher and wanna give them to students. You can find a full list of supplies used in this video in the description area below or in the area below the video if you're watching on kbecca.com. I hope that you found this video to be helpful, and if you'd like to see more print and cut tutorial videos, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll tune in again soon.